trail breaking is to racing what ketchup is to a sausage sandwich. You can get by without it, but you'll be missing something important. Trail breaking is easy to learn, but rewarding to master, and few things are more important to learn in order to be a stronger racer. Let's start from the beginning. Trail braking is when you carry on using the brakes well into a corner, not just in a straight line before you turn. To explain what we mean, is a corner, and the red line will represent where the brake pedal is used. A corner taken without trail braking would look something like this where the brakes are used in a straight line to slow the car down until the point where you turn the steering wheel, upon which you'd release the brakes and turn the car. That's a completely logical thing to do if you don't know any different. Most would rightly think that the brakes are for slowing down and the steering wheel is for turning, and the two have no reason to mix. You'll get around the corner, sure, but not in the fastest way. Going around the same corner with trail braking looks more like this where the brake pedal is still initially used to slow the car down, but isn't released fully when the car starts turning, but is instead eased off to a lower level whilst the car turns in, eventually releasing altogether as you switch from slowing down to speeding up after the corner apex. This looks a bit like leaving a trail around the corner with your brakes, hence the name. Trail braking is super important to get around corners as fast as you can because it gives the car a helping hand to turn. When you use the brakes in this gentle but sustained way whilst turning around the first stage of a corner, you tip some of the car's weight slightly forward, which presses the front tyres into the track, giving them more grip, and also reducing the weight at the back of the car, allowing the rear tyres to slip, which helps the car turn. In short, trail braking presses the front down while the back lifts. Both of these things combine to make your car able to corner faster which means you can take the same line as you normally would, but at higher speed. And you may be thinking, how does trail braking make you faster if it means you're on the brakes for longer? Wouldn't that just make you slower? Trail braking is like overlapping your braking with your turning, which is better for the same reason that relay racers pass a baton whilst running instead of coming to a stop. It blends the braking stage of a corner with the turning stage, which means you're being efficient you might be on the brake pedal for a longer time when trail braking, but you're not braking as early for the corner and you're braking a smaller amount as you turn. This cuts lap times because now you can fly into a turn a little quicker than you were before and when you multiply that by 10 or 20 corners per lap, you end up with a massive difference each time you cross the line. Every corner you come up against is a combined challenge of getting from here to here to here with the highest average speed along the way. Trail braking helps you increase the average speed of this bit by quite a lot. Even if you do the second half of the corner the same as you always have, perfecting trail braking will greatly improve the first half. Like everything in sim racing, trail braking is refined with practice and some do it better than others just due to experience. Here's a great example of this at Summit Point in the Ferrari fixed setup series on iRacing. There's about a second and a half difference between me and the slower car you're about to see, but our cars are identical in every respect. It's a fixed setup series. One of the causes of that gap is better trail braking. Turn one at summit point requires you to initially brake hard, then trail brake to get around it as fast as possible. Here you can see I roll off the brakes as we turn, but I'm still gently braking well into the first half as I burn off that speed efficiently by trail braking while still making the corner. Our comparison car, which was two seconds slower per lap, takes the same corner using much less extensive trail braking. You can see he releases his brakes completely much sooner and so hasn't left as long of a trail as it were. The advantage I get through having stronger trail braking is that I gain the confidence to brake maybe 10 meters later into turn one and spread that higher entry speed out for longer in the corner. Our comparison car brings his speed right down before he corners, whilst we're reducing it whilst cornering, which gives me better average speed. This is the point at which our competitor has completely released his brakes and is no longer trail braking, and this is where I release my brakes. Along this whole stretch of corner, I've given my car better cornering ability than he has, because I've carried more speed in trail braked gentler for longer and had the benefit of harder cornering for more time than he has. It takes confidence to enter a corner faster than you might want to, yet scrub off speed gently. 
there's often a certain moment where it looks like you'll miss the apex, but if you hold the line against your own instincts and let the front tires do their job with the added grip you've given them through trail braking, you will still make the corner and you'll have gained time by entering at higher speed. To me, the word trail braking sounds pretty gentle and uh, easy going. And maybe that's on purpose because that is exactly how your braking needs to feel when you're making this technique happen. Trail braking only works because the amount of braking you're putting on is subtle enough to press the front tires into the track without overwhelming them with the forces of hard braking whilst they're trying to cope with the forces of hard turning. If you use too much brake when you're also trying to turn, then the front tires are too busy working on slowing you down to give you full turning power. To put it another way, and you know, stay with me, but think of it like buttering a piece of bread. If you don't press a knife down at all, it just doesn't spread the butter. If you press it down gently, then you get the perfect amount of traction on the butter and it spreads just right. If you press the knife down with way too much force whilst trying to butter it, then you will overwhelm the bread. Trail braking feels pretty much the same. If you don't trail brake, your front tires are not pressing down on the track as well as they could be. If you trail brake just right, then you'll be giving your tires more grip without overwhelming them by pressing the brakes too hard. If you brake too hard whilst you're entering the corner, you'll be giving your front tires too much work and you'll either go wide or spin when you overwhelm the grip. Trail braking is also something you can do on any corner that requires you to slow down for it using the brakes. All you'll need to do is figure out, through practice, how much braking needs to be done before you start turning in and how much you can leave to do whilst trail braking as you close in on the corner apex. In heavy braking zones like hairpins, it feels like I'm doing about 80% of the braking in a straight line and doing the remaining 20% as I trail brake smoothly into the corner. On faster or longer corners, it can feel like I'm doing 20% of the braking in a straight line and then really gradually burning off speed through sustained trail braking. One thing is always true. Being smooth with your brake pedal is vital because your car is leaning on its nose any bumpiness or hesitation in your brake pedal disturbs the grip that you're putting down at the front of the car because the weight is shifting around. Everyone at the sharp end of the standings has mastered trail braking through practice, but it has one big drawback which may be a pain as you initially push yourself to learn or improve on it. As mentioned before, when you trail brake, your actions press the front tyres into the track and simultaneously unloads the rear tyres, and that is a recipe for a slightly nervous car and a spin if you don't do it with accuracy and smoothness. If you initially find that you are spinning out a lot as you try to be braver on corner entry, that's okay. It will come to you in time if you keep trying and reflecting on why it's done. And check out my video on brake bias if you are constantly spinning as it can completely change your experience in doing this. Fast lap times will always carry a bit of risk because the closer you are to the limit, the less room for mistakes there is. But the more you nudge that limit, the more you will learn to straddle it. For me, trail braking on corner entry is still one of the few things that can catch me out if I'm not concentrating, but it's a risk worth taking every single time. Trail braking is also closely tied to the concept of your angle and slip angle. A video explaining that is linked at the end. Trail braking is also something that can depend on equipment a little bit. Having the right equipment can help with feeling the car on the limit. And if you feel like you're really starting to close in on your best potential, then it's probably worth thinking about. It's easier to gently fade out the brakes as you turn in with a load cell brake pedal, which measures pressure rather than position. And there's a big difference between how much grip and feedback you can feel between a Logitech wheel and a more advanced Fanatec wheel. Having a dedicated cockpit also helps you dial your senses into your own wheel and pedals. And when the motorsport relies on accuracy lap after lap, that's important. I started on a desk with a G29 and did well, but things improved as I steadily built up my setup. Trail braking also applies to all the major racing simulators out there, including iRacing, ACC, R-Factor, GT Sport even, and although it's much harder, there's nothing stopping you from doing it on a controller, the principle is universal and it's only the execution of it that's made easier with better kit. If you're new to the concept of trail braking or you just feel like you're not quite getting it as well as others, go out and give things a go again now that you've heard my take on it.
when you enter a corner and you're using trail braking to ease the car towards the apex, it should feel like you're swooping wide and tightening into the turn, almost leaning the car over onto its door handles, gently. If you hold your nerve and you resist the urge to brake harder, you'll find that you're cornering better and your lap times will fall. Then you can practice, perfect and cement this technique. And that's all for the time being. Let me know if you've got any questions whatsoever, or if something isn't clear, I'll be happy to respond. Subscribe if I've been helpful, and go have a good time racing. Don't forget to check out the discount link for GT Omega in the description. Thank you very much, and see you later.